with a possible sign of WWE returns and more. This is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Talking about his experience in the cruiserweight division of WWE and being on the 205 Live show, Arya Davari compared it to AEW, telling the latter company's unrestricted podcast, We were very proud of that show, even though it didn't get the love from the fans or even the office that it should have. The roster of guys, we got really tight. A lot of us are really close friends to this day. We just always busted our ass to make sure we had the best matches, and honestly, it's the vibe that I get a little bit from AEW. The tightness of the roster roster and how well we want to perform because in AEW, maybe a lot of people do look at us as, oh, we're the second company. In WWE, in 205, at that point, we were like the third or fourth brand. So I love that our roster has this mentality, our roster 205 has the mentality like, we'll show you, we'll show you guys. On Out of Character, the star formerly known as Pete Dunne Butch had this to say about social media. I genuinely just don't enjoy social media. I think you can go out and have a match that you're super proud of, whether it's a live event, pay-per-view, or whatever. You go out and you can remember it for what it was and hear the reactions of the people and all that. Or you can come back and look at your phone. Whether it's positive or negative, if you believe one, you've kind of got to take on the other. It's not fair to do it either way, right? If you start believing all the positive stuff you read, you've got to take on that negative just the same. You can't ignore one or the other. So for me, I just prefer to go out and enjoy what I do. You can hear from the people in the building if it was good or bad or what we could do better. So yeah, I just try and live a little more in the moment. I'm not somebody that spends a whole lot of time on social media to be honest. Touching on representation in WWE, NXT North American Champion Wesley told the Getting Over Wrestling podcast that, I know we have had a lot of progression with people of color in WWE over the years, and it's absolutely beautiful, and I am blessed to be part of that myself. But at first, it didn't seem like that was a possibility. There have been numerous people that have been knocked down a lot of doors to make it a lot easier for younger generations, for people of color to really be successful with this, and I am 100% product of that and hope that I can put that further along. Seeing certain individuals on my TV screen kind of put it into my mind that it was possible. Our truths had an illustrious career across the board no matter where he was because of his talent, his ability, his charisma is off the charts to the point where you can't keep a mic out of that man's hand. Being about being harassed by fans for taking time off from WWE due to pregnancy, Maria Kanellis told Steve Falls on 10 Count, During that time when I was having so many problems of like getting into the mode of motherhood and like seeing all the comments of like, oh, your husband is just this and you're just that and how dare you have a kid and saying things about my daughter. She was like a couple of days old and I'm getting like death threats. It's like, come on people, it's wrestling. And there's plenty of other talented people out there that can fulfill that need for you. It's just right now, I gotta take some time for me and my family. For an interview with Coltaholic, retired pro soccer player Adebayo Akinfenwa spoke about the talks he's had with WWE saying there were conversations. There was truth in the conversations. My team sat down with their team. Me and Triple H had sent messages back and forth, but these were times when I was 100% concentrated on football. Now I'm retired, and I've said this, I was lucky enough to play for 22 years, but now I've finished. I'm going to try my hand at as many different things, and what lands, lands. I'm going to try and enjoy the next chapter of my life. Life. 
on ad free shows. Commentator Tony Schiavone spoke about Chris Jericho's role in AEW as a locker room leader with him, saying he's going to be, he's just kind of a leader of the locker room. That's basically all that I know about it. When we have locker room meetings, he kind of runs things. There's a number of athletes that he's kind of in charge of. They're creative. And other than that, he's just a guy that has a lot of clout. And because he has a lot of clout, when he says something, the wrestlers take it to heart. I don't know if he really has an official title like we do, but I just know that's kind of what he's doing. Call it the team captain for lack of a better word. Also addressing the rumor that he is AEW president Tony Khan's right-hand man, Shivani said, I did a search on the internet and it came up that Tony Shivani was now number two and Tony Khan's right-hand man. And I thought, okay, as long as the wrestlers believe that, what the hell? Because that's the furthest from the truth. Tony Khan does not have a number two. He's his own number two. With Randy Orton out of action due to a back injury and not expected back till next year, Wrestle Votes would tell Give Me Sport that when Randy went down, the plan was for him to come back and immediately turn on Matt Riddle. Maybe they don't have anything drawn out for Riddle now because they assume that Randy would be back by now. On the sessions, Sean Spears would reveal that former WWE star Tyler Breeze is done competing in the squared circle. As he said, there will be times we'll hop in the ring and have 20-25 minutes. We just did that a couple of weeks ago with the guns, just at the school to get some cardio in. He can still go. He still does everything. But I say to him, hey man, getting ready for a second run? He goes, nah, retired. So I don't know. That's the true answer. But I see the excitement sometimes when he hops in. Touching on Vince McMahon's final days as chairman and CEO of WWE, Dutch Mantel alleged on Smack Talk that he stopped caring. Triple H took his time and turned it around. Now it has so much positivity to it, and it took just a good person who understands the wrestling business and storytelling because I don't think Vince gave a crap. He was making money, and he was, hey, I'm on rest, you guys figure it out. I think he put the personal feelings to it that he might just not like this guy because of a personal reason. I'm not saying that's what happened. I don't think he wanted to be sat down and told this long storyline. You do this for 50 years and you get burned out. Asked about a rumored bout between Roman Reigns and The Rock at WrestleMania 39, Lance Anawaii told Bill Apter that rumor or that dream match or whatever you want to call it has been in the ears of everybody for a long time. Whether it will come to fruition or not, who knows, but WWE, they'll probably do whatever it takes to make it happen. I would pick Roman. I feel that he has the youth, the strength, and the time to dedicate to fans of the Wrestling Federation. Speaking about reports of WWE getting rid of themed events like Hell in a Cell, Dave Meltzer said on Wrestling Observer Newsletter that regarding rumors of concept changes in pay-per-views next year, the only thing we were told was as a general rule, there will be less themed pay-per-views. The story going around as an example is that no show will be designated Hell in a Cell, for example, months ahead of time, but that the Hell in a Cell match would be used not on a specifically planned date, but when a storyline feud reached the point that a Hell in a Cell match was needed. But even that in specific wasn't confirmed. Past that story could be accurate as Paul Levesque is trying to shape a new course and a new presentation, and he wants to forge ahead not in copying Vince McMahon, but in his own direction. Staying on the topic of changes in WWE, Paul Heyman had this to say about it on After the Bell with Corey Graves. Well, it's different than the last transition because the last transition was going to be the end of the New York Territory and the beginning of a national and then global expansion because anybody that had seen the rise of Vincent Kennedy McMahon knew that his vision and his goals and his ambitions could not be contained with just the Northeast Territory. He saw the expansion of cable and he realized it's a national game now and with the eye on once it 
it becomes national, it's going to be international. So it was also the end of professional wrestling in the Northeast and the implementation of sports entertainment. The entire concept of bigger, better, brighter, Madison Avenue friendly, licensed out action figures, t-shirts, and memorabilia, etc, etc. The big vision for what was a very enormous contained niche industry. Now we're seeing a regime change of a $5.5 billion publicly traded global conglomerate. It's a far different type of progression into the future because the inheritance of the product comes along with the fact that the product is already established with billion dollar license fees and therefore there is an expectation of what the product is. There's not going to be that drastic of a change in the entire concept of what we're promoting. To go from Worldwide Wrestling Federation, which then became World Wrestling Federation, to the concept that is now World Wrestling Entertainment. That was the last transition. This transition is, what do we do with this World Wrestling Entertainment with its billion dollar license fees, and how do we progress it into today's culture, to dominate today's culture, to compete with the NFL and the NBA and the NHL and the Major League Baseball and overseas football and soccer and cricket, etc, etc, let alone every other form of entertainment that's out there. As many fans are wondering when Sasha Banks and Naomi will return to WWE, especially given the new regime, it has been announced that they've had to pull out of a non-affiliated event. This notification is a Vulture Festival event update. Due to an unforeseen scheduling conflict, Mercedes Varnado and Trinity Fatu are no longer able to participate in their event on Saturday, November 12th at 8 p.m. We will go ahead and refund your purchase automatically. And please respond to this email if you prefer to exchange for another Vulture Festival ticket. We appreciate your understanding. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.